Hey guys, it's Kane here. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use an alternative statement to if else, which we have done to use for a selection. And we're going to use the alternative now, which is called the switch statement. This switch statement, just as I told you, is an alternative to if else but its capacity is uh, quite limited to uh, what you can do with the selections. So essentially, when there is a decision making, you firstly need to use if else, but if the values are precise, there is an alternative for you, which is called the switch and the cases. What you do with the switch is that if the uh, comparison of a statement when you take the decision is a precise number just as we saw in a previous exercise the uh, fast food menu exercise where the choices were precisely equal to uh, one thing then you can use a switch statement to solve the same kind of question the big difference between if else and the switch statement is that if else statement can branch and evaluate uh, values that are in range. For example, if your choice was in between 1 and 10, you can basically write an if statement to clarify that this choice should be in between 1, which means greater than equals to 1, and at the same time less than or equals to 10. So this allows you to create values uh, that you can evaluate in range. Switch, however, does not have the same functionality. When you use a switch statement, you must make sure that the values are precisely equal to what you are going to uh, compare. So in this case, when you write the switch statement, the values should be precisely equal to. So let me just create a new program and show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to save this as the switch exercise. And uh, try to uh, create the values for uh, standard statements, such as I'm going to simply copy paste the IO stream namespace and also the part where we have the return zero. Now that we have done with this, um, I'm going to show you how this can work. Assuming that you have a program that will allow you to select only three choices at a time. So we can offer the choices as select A, B, and or C. And then you are getting the choice of the user. We are asking the user to enter a choice. Basically, when you want the user to enter A, B, and C, this should be regarded as a character. So I'm going to take this choice as a character, since it only contains one character. So I'm going to define it as car. Now that when you take this choice, you can use an if statement. What you do in here, you can simply say something like the choice is actually equals to, with the single good, A. But the caps lock can be on on the user computer, so it's a nice idea to show an OR statement and say something like choice can also be equals to A, which is the capital one. And then what you could do at this point, you can show the A value. You can simply say something like C out choice A is selected. Now this is called a precise selection because when the user are offered to select A, B, and or C, then you know that the choices are A, B, or C. They are not in range. It's not in between like they can choose anything in between A and uh, Z or whatsoever. The choices are limited. 
in this case three and they can only pick up one so whenever I execute this uh, program when I type a a either capital or a lowercase I will get the choice in here an alternative approach to this if you don't want to use it is the switch statement now there are arguments on the internet that you, you can find that switch statement works better than if so if there is the situation arise for you, you can use the switch statement uh, to save uh, from some of the memory usage. However, because the programs that we write are so small, uh, this difference actually doesn't make in the programs. So if you are working on a very large scale project that even, uh, you know, a couple of uh, bytes would matter for you, I would agree with that kind of argument that switch could be uh, potentially more useful but because the programs we write are so small uh, in fact it doesn't matter which one you use. So how do we create an alternative to uh, if statement here with the switch? What you do in here is that you write switch and put the variable inside first. This variable is the variable that you got as the choice and each case within that switch will be equal to one of the values that you already identified. So instead of saying choice is equals to A or choice is equals to a capital A, you're going to define these as cases. So we're going to say case, the value that this choice can take, which in this case can be a lowercase a or it could also be a uppercase a so when you define your switch statement and define your cases it is exactly like this so if the choice is equals to lowercase a or if the choice is equals to uppercase a and you can actually expand this uh, even add more cases should you want to do so in this case i'm gonna create exactly the same Thing, choice A is selected and I'm going to continue for the rest of them now before you pass into the next case this is very important you need to make sure that the break statement is in there if you don't write the break statement this can jump into the next case and execute them both at the same time so if I want to create another case all I have to do is I pass in there and write the next case and this time around I'm going to say choice B is selected. Now each case must end with a break and if you don't do that the program actually doesn't trigger an error but logically it doesn't uh, work as it should be. So this means that whenever you select A on your keyboard it will execute A, but because you missed the break statement, it will not stop there. It will also execute B and then break up. So let's just try to run this thing to see the outcome. I'm going to run it. I'm going to type A. And as you can see from the output, both A and B are executed. This means that because of the lack of break statement here, the program didn't stop and continue to execute until it finds a break statement. So we're gonna close this now and put the break here and see what happens this time. Gonna execute the same program and once again, I'm gonna enter A and this time around, instead of showing both A and B, it actually displayed only A where it stopped when it saw a break statement. So you can expand this as much as you want. You can add more cases, but each case means that that value, which in this case the cho uh, choice value, is precisely equals to the whatever you wrote inside the case. So this means that the choice will be precisely equal to either lowercase c or an uppercase one. There is also what we call as the default statement, which works like an else statement in switch. When you put a default statement in switch, it means that none of these cases are actually satisfied. 
so the case is not A, not B, not C, so automatically I accept it as the default one. Whatever I write in here will be executed if the value you enter is not matching any of the cases you identified before. So I'm going to say something like, please select A, B, or C. Other choices are not accepted. So when you define this, you can leave the default as it is, since it is the very last case in your switch, or you can also put a break statement. In C++, there is no strict regulation or uh, rule to put a break at the end of a default. However, some other languages, such as C Sharp, enforces this. So it is a good idea or a good practice to put a break statement at the end of the default, even though if you don't, nothing changes. So I'm going to execute this to see the outcome. When I enter the value B now, the choice would be B. And as I run the program again, if I enter the value C, it will display me the C value. If I attempt to enter any other value, such as some gibberish data here, then it will say, please select A, B, or C. Other choices are not accepted. So in this case, the program doesn't understand what you are trying to do, which falls into the default condition, and it triggers the message, because the choice itself is not A, not B, and not C. So going back into the fast food program, how can we convert this program into a sweet structure? So I'm going to actually save this program as fastwood program switch and slightly change it to show you how you can write exactly the same program this time using a switch statement rather than an if one. So every single if statement that you wrote here will actually be converted into a switch structure. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this as into comment and still keep the total price at the end. Next, I'm going to write a switch here. Using the switch statement, which is the menu choice, I'm going to evaluate each and every one of these choices. In here, my first case will be 1. Now, this is a nice change from the letter uh, cases, because when you wrote a letter, you had to put the quotation mark. But because this is now a number, we don't have to follow the same structure. So I'm just going to name it as 1. Case 1 refers to choice, menu choice is being 1. Just as before, the choice in here referred to as equals to lowercase a or the uppercase a. So once we have written this down, I'm going to put a break statement. And whatever you write in between, such as the burger is selected, how many burgers would you like to order and the total price whatsoever they will go inside the case itself so everything else would be the same apart from the if else part and we're going to put a break here because we want our case to end now that the first case is completed i'm going to move into the second one case two will be exactly the same with this time the choice being the second one in this case the second choice is chicken nap and we're gonna copy paste these statements and put them inside the second choice so instead of burger we're gonna say chicken wrap we're gonna take the order and we are going to calculate the total price the final choice which is the chicken burger we're gonna put it there as well I'm going to put a break statement and copy paste all the statements here. And now that uh, the third choice is also complete, we completed the menu of choices, which is one, two and three. However, there is the option that the user might have selected a number that is not 1, not 2, and not 3. 
in this case we're going to put it into the default section and all the code that you wrote before for the else part which is sorry you need to do a selection between one and three your choices are listed on the menu will go under the default section because essentially the cases are not matching to one two or three it is optional to put a break statement here but i regard that as a good practice so i always do even if you don't put however the program would work fine the very last thing you should do is to basically get rid of this because we wrote it uh, before in the if else part and just show the total price. Now all we have to do is to save this and run the program. Let's see how it runs. As you can see the program triggered without any error and it shows the menu. Now whenever I select something that doesn't exist on the menu, it says, sorry, you need to do a selection in between one and three. The choices are listed there and the price will be zero because no calculation was done. If we rerun the program again, this time around, I'm gonna select one of the choices. In this case, let's say chicken wrap, and I would like to order five. This means that the second choice is four, and I ordered four dollars and I ordered five five times four I need to pay twenty and the twenty dollar price is listed there so this is how we do if else and switch basically if your values are uh, exactly matching to uh, an outcome such as choice being one two three or a b c or some other precisely defined value you can use a switch however if the choices or selection path that you are going through are in between some ranges such as greater than zero or less than equals to a hundred then a switch statement is not practical because this means that you have to evaluate every single choice in between one and hundred and that will take a lot of time to code so in short when the values are in range we use if else when the values are not in range you can use if else but also switch as well i hope this video was enlightening and uh, you understand the concept of switch and if else very well this is the end of my video i'll see you guys in the next one take care